welcome ladies and gentlemen true blues of all ages and of all sexes that goes for you too ladies because you are doing very well these days and we absolutely love it and um, welcome to the chelsea roar the podcast that i bring you by the fans for you the chelsea fans and uh, as you can see it's been a long time coming and um, the man that is joining me today needs absolutely no introduction however i'm going to give him an introduction anyway it is the one and only king canners to you mr paul canneville welcome to the show my brother good evening to you and all your listeners thank you for um, inviting me again yeah it's uh, an important time don't get me wrong with obviously what's been going on at Chelsea. And coming up to the end of the season, we hopefully can swiftly move on to better things with the, the new chairman in place. So, yeah, it's all good. Absolutely, Paul. And uh, it's good to see you again. I, I think the last time I saw you was at the Brentford game, which wasn't... We won't talk about that. I mean... Okay. It was pre-game, but it, it was nice at the time, but not, not so yeah. much after. <laughs> um. Listen, guys, for any of you who have just stumbled on this podcast and have your head under a rock uh, for the last while, um, you'll know that Paul Cannaville obviously um, founded the, the, the Paul Cannaville Foundation back in 2015, a very, very important foundation, um, not just for Chelsea Football Club and for football in general, but for, I suppose, the culture within football. Um, and Paul... Uh, you mentioned a podcast that we've done a number of years ago. That was on a different podcast that I run, Dynamo's Dozen. So um, I suppose one of the things that I found interesting, which I'm happy to kind of revisit again with you, is is mm. kind of give people, I suppose, a journey in your own words of how you came to that. Because, I mean, not only were you the first black player to ever play for Chelsea, um, 1982, 21, sub for... Uh, so for the great Clive Walker, um, not a not a bad, not a bad player to be replacing, um, but I suppose give people like kind of an idea of your journey from 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 going what you experienced to to what you represent now, and you you know you represent, you know, I think so in, much more um, than football. I suppose is, is what I'm trying to say. Um yeah, well, been using that platform. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, um, of course, everybody knows my story. Um, wanting to be a professional from the age of five that's all I loved that's all I wanted to be and a difficult time growing up is your mum wants the very best for you and that's getting an education yep I was one of those kids that didn't take education seriously but I was good in sports in all sports and, and football was one of them um, times that I played for schools for Saturday clubs sat Sunday clubs and it was unbelievable everybody wanted me pulling me left right center and then you get yourself in trouble you think well, that's it for you but you come out and you've been given a chance and that's when you take your football seriously where I was a semi-pro at the end at the early age 15 16 and went on there where a few clubs several clubs were looking at me and eventually signed for Chelsea now, everybody knows um, that, yeah, at, at that time, yes, for me, a Tory type, could not understand, I didn't know the history of Chelsea, I didn't know what to expect, and um, to me, to be breaking through the first season, that was, it was fairly easy, I was playing in the reserves, and for under four months, and given seven months to prove myself, four months, I was drafted into the first team, and that is where every young player wants to be. You see yeah. the Mason Matt, you see the Reese, all of those young players, that's where they want to be. They want to be in the first team. Sure. So um, with that, that was my chance. And I've got to say this, the late John Neal, I miss him in peace, gave me that opportunity. And yes, you mentioned Clive Walker, um, a favourite of the the Chelsea fan mm -hmm. and he played in the position I played with left wing um, but I was asked that day it was actually that day so that Candice 
your sub to make your debut playing against Crystal Palace. So you can imagine the young boy's excitement. And I say young boy, I was about 20, 22. And um, I had that's to still go young. That's still suit. young. <laughs> yeah, for already, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I had to go and get the suit, and, you know what I mean? Be ready and prepare myself. And get back to the bridge and get meet up with the coach and the rest of the lads. It's like, wow, this is it. I'm, I'm excited itself. I'm sitting on my own where the lads are all comfortable. They've done this before, but now this is new to me. So I'm on the coach, glazing out the window, thinking about the game. If I get the chance, what am I going to do? How am I going to play? And all those things are going through your head. And it's nearer the, to the ground. So let's park and you start to see fans and thinking, oh my God, start butterflies and now in my stomach and lie. I'm just, oh my gosh. You know what I mean? We're here, but we're here. So, um, yeah, but, I mean, coming off the coach and going straight into the change room, it was um, an atmosphere that was just so um, exciting, but nervous at the same time. And don't get me wrong, my teammates were so great. Um, obviously, congratulating, say, you know what, Paul, when you come on, all the best. You know what I mean? Give me that tap on the side. It was good. It was really good. Um, and I was ready. Don't doubt that I was ready. So um, I think just coming out, and um, and the side bitch warming up, and obviously the rest of the lads are warming up. It's great. So you go back inside, and then you know what I mean that's when the, the eleven side eleven players come out, and I'm sub go straight to the dugout, and I think that's where you you know you sit there and you think and you look at your opponent the player. That if you get on, that's who you play against. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, man, if I get on, I know what I can do. I yeah. know. Yeah, I can skin this guy. So that's that's all that's going through my head. Don't get me wrong. Um, so obviously, from the game, it started with whistle blown, referee, and uh, the first half it was it was tight, it was close. It was the London derby, it's Crystal Palace Chelsea. Sure. So it, it was nil nil. I was it, and I thought, you know what? If it stays like this, he's got to put me on. No matter what, I, I can't. Can't see he not put me on if he stays in all like this. You could see you was, could see the moment. You could oh, see. Oh yeah, I could yeah, see. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm ready. I'm playing plan. I'm ready. So um you could say we come out for the second half, whistle blown where again. And you see like 20 minutes going by, still the same as it new and I'm thinking, come on, man. Change change this. You know, I'm, I'm talking to him, I'm yeah, let the man do no, I'm ready. So 25 minutes went past 30, and I think, yeah, no, yeah, 28, I remember it. And that's it, 20, 39, no, 29. And that was when I was thinking, well, what's going on? And I think this guy's not going to put me on. It's like, wow. I know they needed something. And I'm thinking, come on, this, this is the time now. Look at me. Look at me. Um, and that's when that shout came. Cannons, don't get warmed up. Oh. You heard that sound and I was ready. So I went down the sideline, I stretched, I stretched, I couldn't stretch. And with that, I was, couldn't believe the, the shock of hearing this racist abuse that I was receiving. And it was so vile, trust me. I, I, I ignored it to, to the limit. And I ignored it to, I think, look, Paul, Forget it. They're trying to put you off. You're not having that right now. This game is important to you as well as a team. Sure. But it it got to me. It really did because I couldn't leave. Oh, white stewards doing this in here. And uh, it was a shock that when I did turn around to see who was the big group, it was the majority of my own fan. And that was the shock. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that at all. And that shut me down. It honestly shut me down. I seen the man say, come on, Ken, let's get more. We'll take off the traffic. And I now don't want to take off the traffic. Yeah. I don't want to get on the pitch. Yeah. So um, eventually I did. And um, I hugged the sideline. I hugged the line. That's all I remember. I didn't move nowhere. I got the ball, developed that. I was going to, you know what I mean, keep going the run, but I didn't put it, just gave back. 
I just want to hear that referee like it's an end whistle. Yeah. And um he did. And I just went straight into the change. And you gotta understand as well, like when you're in the change room and you, you get a lot of banter amongst the players, you know what I mean? How the game's running, what that ball and so you're talking it amongst each other. This was the quietest change room I've ever been. The lads came in, what could they say? The lads they the lads it. could obviously Hear this yeah, they well. heard it. Yeah. They heard it. It was that yeah, close yeah. to the line. They heard it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was only my manager at the time, Jordan Miller, that took me in the corner and said, Look, man, I can imagine what you're feeling. And he, he told it straight. He said, Boy, Paul, these are the same Ewick fans that are paying your wages. What do you want to do? And he's right. What do I want to do? Mm-hmm. Now, all that thoughts was going in my mind to the day. You know what? I can't play for this. Don't get me wrong, I ain't gonna lie, I've not seen, I've not been, I've grown up. I lived in South Hall, Minnesota, so it was a lot of Asians, a lot of Jamaicans, a lot of, Jamaican, a lot of Dominicans. And a young boy that would be walking home time of evening and you could see a car slowly parked up, see the red lights where it's braked, and then out comes some national front, some skinhead, and all they do is when they beat, Black person. Yeah. So I've seen racism. I saw that. And I was taking it. So it wasn't, you know what I mean, that I wasn't scared or frightened. I was just shocked that this was going on in a professional football game. I just didn't expect that. And that's what really shook me up, to be honest. But from your, from, from your own fans that are meant to be supporting you well, coming yeah. on to help, help, their te- help your team, help their team win. Yeah, that didn't help. That yeah. didn't help at all. Do you think that's what help. really got you? Do you think that's what it, really I, got you? Yeah, well, of course, it's part of that did. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's just what I'm playing for your team. Mm. You've not even seen me play. You yeah. might have heard that I'm performing in the reserves, but you've not seen me play. And here I am, given the chance. Let me show you that first. Yeah. But you ain't even given me that chance. Yeah. Because of the color of my skin, you don't want me representing. Chelsea. Now, how did that look for me? That sign forms, it's got seven months to prove yourself. And then you've got your family, obviously, that were there that day. And they are now telling me, why would you want to play for a racist side like that? Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to convince them and tell them it's not the t- it's not the club. It's just a majority you know, no, element. No. Element. Yeah. They just thought, no, protect you. Yeah, you don't need to be playing that. No. I'll, I'll try to convince them. It's not that. But this was my dream. What am I going to do now? Should I walk away from this? A lot of things are going for me. You know what I mean? And I went about to let anybody beat me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, take away that. So that's where, um, obviously, that I was. I stayed at Chelsea for three years. For three years, I totally took the racism. Racist abuse. For my fan, until obviously everybody knows the game that you know what I mean really changed it was we call it was the milk cup back in the day. Yep, yep. And we played Sheffield Wednesday away, and everything emotions was going on because I was meeting my dad for the first time. He left when I was about one, two. He lived in Sheffield, so he was on the phone. So I invited him if he wanted to see me play because he's never like my mum. They never ever saw me play football, not wow. even when I was a kid. Yeah. Wow. So here was an opportunity for him to come and see me play. And you know what? God spent because how the game turned out. Um, yes, 3 0 down at first half, looking like we're out of the milk cup. I'm a substitute again. Here, what? Return, second half, can they do a straight on? And what happens? I scored first goal in 11 <laughs> seconds. Wow. You scored and changed it. A second goal. The game's drawed for all. I mean, your dad just saw his son score two goals and change the game. What more would you want oh. <laughs> for him to come and see? You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think there was a lot of things going on for, with me at that time. Because I was, you know what I mean? My concern was, where had you been throughout all my life? You know what I mean? I needed a male figure. Personal. To be honest. Yeah. And that is how I feel. I felt. And I was, yeah, I was, 
things were going through my head that I wanted to ask him, <laughs> did that ever happen? And I met him in the bar after <laughs> in the town to play with that. And I had so much to made, but with that, yeah, how was the game? It was all right. Um, you think it was good? Yep. And I weren't getting nothing. I thought, you know what? Best things first. Do you want a drink? Yep. Let's go. <laughs> so we had that lager and that's it. It was all out, you know what I mean? But yeah, we get on. Don't get me wrong. It's still there today. You know what I mean? But understanding the father, is, to know him now, you know what I mean? And he's still alive. I'm blessed. You know yeah. what I mean? It's with my mum. So that was the situation. Everybody didn't know. Um, but after that game, obviously the fans changed and started to accept me see my name and yeah i was you know what i mean one of the boys or as you call it as my teammates started to say because he played at watford and i must have tackled leaf of bliss on the side i took ball and Luther, and they started to sing my name and a teammate said can did you hear that they sing your name mate you're one of us and yes i had to turn to him and said but i've always been one of you yep you know what i mean come on man and yeah, from that, that was it. That was Chelsea days. And I enjoyed them days, don't get me wrong. Um, into where we are now, don't get, you know what I mean? I still support Chelsea, even though going through those torrid and, you know what I mean, hard times. Um, you couldn't take away, I think, that season when we got promoted from Division 2, Division 1, when my lines changed because at that time I was supporting Leeds United. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know why football was exciting for me. <laughs> but then that game made it all. I said, look, I played for Chelsea, Paul. Why am I supporting a team out of London when I live in London and I play for Chelsea? Mm. May 10th, support Chelsea. So that's where, yeah, where I am at this moment. You, know? you, uh, you, you, were lo- you, you met my dad, actually. Shout out to... My father, Mick, uh, now that we're talking about fathers, he had a, he had a similar experience. His uh, He didn't know who he was going to follow back in the 1970 Cup final. And he right. watched the game, and that's when he became a Chelsea supporter. <laughs> there you go. It's amazing, isn't it, when you change. Because everybody in, um, down in London, it was either QPR, it was a man you, or yeah. the Arsenal. And I supported Leeds because at that time, I grew up with a black and white telly and Leeds United played in a white shirt. Looked good. So <laughs> I supported Leeds United. Plus, yeah. but at that time, they were playing some very good, yeah, very good true. football. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, it's amazing because I, I tell you what it was because I grew up watching um, Eddie Gray and the two brothers, the Gray brothers, they were playing sure. either wing. And with that last home game, we played where we won promotion, we played Leeds United and beat 5 0. You know, I came on, didn't I? Yeah. When we was 4 0 up, came and scored at five. Obviously, we managed to tell you, please don't score because the fans are on the sidelines and went waiting to come into the pitch. And who do I take on? My idol, Eddie Gray. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I did a shimmy and I went past him. But before I went past him, I went in his ears. And I said, sorry, Eddie. And went and took the ball. And I scored. No, you don't know how that really... Uh, Eddie Gray. The guy, I was supporting Leeds tonight and I'm watching this guy and I'm like, okay. Yeah, that's, that in itself was yeah, an honour just to be on the same pitch and to play that you was growing up watching. Yeah. You look at how far you've reached. So, yeah, it's a tremendous day. It's... And to be fair, you were actually quite a big winger as well. Like you must be well, you're like a six six two. So like tall. You're, yeah, you're but tall, you but understand. not tall and skinny. Like you you ain't no Peter Crouch, no offense, Peter. But you know what that was? You know where I started my position football? Oh. I was centre half. I was Makes sense. centre half. And look, believe me, you couldn't get past me. I was a Des Walker. I don't I doubt would, it. I could let you get I would let you have some yards. I still catch you. That's how quick I was in that. You were but quick. What it was, yeah, it what it was. I had skill, and I'd come out with a ball, looking to pass it to a player, and couldn't find a player. So what do I do? I dribble it all the way from my pot. Gain some yeah. yards. Gain some yards. So yeah. Yeah. I think that's when the manager changes. And uh, if a player can do that, 
you're playing in the wrong half. So that's when they switched me to left wing. And yeah, it was a case of when I got the ball, taking on a player, it was too easy. It was easy. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Whether I dropped the right shoulder, whether I dropped the left shoulder, whether I knocked it to the left and go around to the right, I was doing that. As long as I put that ball in the box for my striker, that's all it counted. Quick question. So, um, now that so, you're, you, you've given me a little bit of a brainwave there, um, yeah. if there was one player that you didn't get the chance to play with... I said that already. Who? I said, I said that already. I, I would have loved to supply Jock Bar. He would have been killing goals, my friend. Man. Jock Bar on the end of my part in the book, bro, man. pulled so, back, back post. Yeah, Aryan yeah, Robin, Aryan Robin, and Paul Cannaville on the wings. Wow. Aryan Robin and Loved Damian Duff on the wings. Love the way Aryan Robin played, direct, straight in. You know exactly what he's doing, and he went for goal. Yeah, I love the way he played. What well, we've had some players that from Chelsea, yeah, Chelsea. Duffer, uh, Duffer, our own Irish man as yeah, well. Yeah, even Duff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah. when he's at Fulham and he comes. Yeah, ah. yeah, direct. So yeah. we've had some wingers. We've had some wingers. We um, have had some wingers. <laughs> no, not yeah. that. But I suppose that's that's um, what I love about that story, and I suppose what all of us Chelsea fans love about that story is the uh, just the perseverance and the mental fortitude to come through all of that and actually make these inherently you know racist motherfuckers to actually accept you because. It didn't change the fact that they had that, you know, within them at that time. I know times are changing, thankfully. Um, but the fact that you could even make some sort of, you know, guy who has no problem, you know, chatting this sort of racist abuse to actually change his narrative a little bit just to go, oh, yeah, he's all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. After three years of abuses, that shows a mental toughness that, like, not a lot of people have, even within sports. I think... Not realizing how difficult that was, I didn't. And you know, where I was a young lad, and as I said repeatedly, it was about a dream. So I didn't want to rock the boat, and I could have. Yeah, I could have complained. I could say, "Look, is this what I'm supposed to be playing for? Why aren't you doing something, Chelsea? Hey, what FA? Why aren't you doing something?" But I didn't. Yeah. I didn't complain because I, my first natural four if i made any noise i'd be kicked out sure which is now, which is a problem back told, then, yeah. which is well, you yeah. make noise well the young they can't you can't take it you can't take it anywhere see you later blah, blah, release and that's what i didn't want so that's the reason why i didn't say nothing i just got on with it but they didn't know how hard that was you can imagine every game you're you, you, like my performance really relied on them accepting me, examining my first touch of the ball. If I didn't feel comfortable the first touch, I knew oh, I'm going to have a nightmare and they're going to be on my back. But I had to concentrate every time. That's what it was. And no kid should be playing going for that. No, pressure. no. No kid. No. You know what I mean? And that time, I trust you, no, don't get me wrong. And I say that, that was just the regime of old to Chelsea to net the regime the new regime now yeah nobody did anything nobody come to the side and say Paul how are you feeling mm. that was it I'd gone from a game thinking of what could I what could I have done better should I have released that ball that's how I went you know what I mean whether we lost whether we won that was how I went home if not every player I, I would have thought most players go home thinking oh, I should have released that ball earlier. Why did I lose that ball? We talk about the game. Let's improve it when we go back on Monday and train. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what it was for me. But obviously, I was getting a bit more difficult than most of those players. But so, you, um, you, you, yeah. you, you paved the way for, like, forget about, you know, the Drogba's and the Desoyers and all that came through, you know, in later years. Um, but, but there's a case in point. I remember... Uh, Marcel Desoy, I was a young young guy watching yeah. the game on TV, and Marcel Desoy was pointing at the badge, going, "You're racially abusing me, and I'm I'm playing for you, you know." So, yeah. and this was what from '98 on, you know. Sure, and man. Th th there's always listen. There's one born every minute, mate. Um, you know. Well, but, but you paved the way for guys like I mean, when I first start watching football, one of my believe it or not, 
this is a, a strange one. Being Irish, one of my favorite uh, players was um, was Terry Phelan, who obviously played. For oh, Terry Phelan. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, yeah, so yeah. You you kind of what you had done kind of paved the way for players like Terry Phelan, Terry Phelan, and Paul Elliott then yeah. coming true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. was phenomenal. You know, these it was like okay, this isn't a thing anymore. So this is kind of why you are, you know, one of a kind with what you had to endure. But you, you know. You know what I mean? It's weird how you said that because I didn't even think anything like that. Like, I would made it easier for players and even the young players that were there in um at that time. Um, they weren't called academy lads; uh, they were called apprentices. Sure, yeah, so, sure. So they Clean were in the boots and all that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Trust me. No word of lie. I'm sorry. I know young kids at that time want to be footballers, but you might not have it as hard as <laughs> yeah. being an apprentice. And I wanted to be an apprentice. But when I realised what they did, when I joined the, as like a professional, I was so glad I didn't be able to. They were doing some work. When you see pre-season was over, we had, that was our time out, isn't it? That was our rest period, go on holiday. Oh, they were still working. Oh, they were painting the club. They had work to do. And I thought, oh my gosh, maybe I'm I'm lucky to miss that. That because I always thought that somebody would pick me up to be an apprentice. Nobody, nobody. I was like, wow. Everybody said that I'm good enough, but nobody's come for me. <laughs> but um, to those lads, um, Keith Jones and Jonah and Keith Dublin, and you know what I mean. They had so much talent. Lee Swears, um, um, they had some oh. Unbelievable young players and black players that that yeah. Chelsea with. They yet kept winning in the Southeast London Cup every year out. That's how talented they were. And I thought, you know what I mean? But it was amazing. that like, I think I realized when I came back in 2004, and don't get me wrong, after my difficulties and so forth, health and so forth, to be invited back at the club that you love, and then to realize now. Um, in Neil Barnett that invited me, took spy, me on the yeah. pitch. Ah, oh, spite. And I was so nervous walking around the whole of this pitch because I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And I got, uh, yeah, standing applause. Mm-hmm. And everywhere I went, from the east to the west to the north, it was like, oh my gosh, my leg was shaking. And that's the truth. Yeah. I was like, I didn't expect that from any of the fans. And um, to go down, sit down, you know, back to my seat, and let me tell you something. I thought I was at the wrong game. I saw six black players, and I thought, are they, are they just, are they sure about that? <laughs> I was like, they're playing with Chelsea Cup. No, no, something's <laughs> wrong there. I swear, Lord, I was doubting it. Like, that's not right. They just did that for me or something. No, I realised, wow, they got six black guys in this. I was, trust me, I was amazed. I was amazed, you know what I mean? You said Marcel to sign it. You know what I mean? They had some players, my boy. Oh, who's the French other French guy who played in midfield? That's um, the boy. Oh. At the time. Desire's time. McAlady. Oh, McAlady. Oh, what a player. Oh, come on, man. So good. So good that they named the role after him, you know what I mean? Oh, mate, I'm telling you. Yeah. They had players. I was still so a still a steam, Yeah. Uh, yep. You had some players. Yeah, Seriously. and they were coming on good, and then you saw Jimmy the Floyd come along. Jimmy Floyd, Jimmy Floyd. <laughs> they've got players. I can name Furlong. They've got oh, yeah. so, yeah, got a, got a rod yeah, I, I played with Furlong when I retired. Furlong was then at um, it was Furlong Enfield, and uh, he played along with him. And coming lad, he strike out of front, and he, yeah, what he was at that time, I said, boy. Don't let him push you around. The defender, that's what he did. He'll need it until he knows you're weak. Give it back to him. Yeah, if he showed you, you showed him back. Mm-hmm. And to see that he went on, you know what I mean, playing professionally at Notts County, I think he started up, and then went on to play for Chelsea. He played well. for QPR uh, for a while as well, didn't he? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. he played yeah, after yeah. that. He's doing yeah, a yeah. role down, I think, up in yeah. young. But yeah, this is, you know what I mean, as you just said, so... Um, resembling that it was just yeah players that followed after me if that's what i uh, as had caused or 
You know what I mean? I, I accept that. I really do. Um, it was a challenge for myself um, as well as others that I perceived and stayed. You know what I mean? I stayed there. Trust me. And I could have walked out. Pers- yep, that's the word. Perseverance. And I could have left any time. But as I said, I wasn't allowing it. This is my, my chance. This is where I wanted to be. And that's that kind of So, yeah. I love it. I'm glad, I'm glad I did. I love it, man. Let's let's move in then to the into the foundation before yes. we before we get on to the modern times. This was yeah. uh, now obviously you um you would set up the, the foundation um obviously from scratch and, and from you know what in the space of seven years to how mm. it started and to what it's become is just astronomical, really, isn't it? Um, you know what? It was only for a stage because I didn't know what I was gonna do. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was in denial of a lot of things. But I didn't miss football and I got myself in all the drugs and I had cancer, I had to go to rehab. Yeah. And I didn't know what I was doing. You you've um, lived many lives. You live many well, lives. Well, everybody knows that now, but yeah. you know what I mean? But to come back and down at Chelsea be connected at that time of the foundation and they wanted me to go into school to talk to kids and I think but these kids weren't even born when I was playing how would they know of me yeah. and they're like you know what I mean Can you go in there you talk to a kid and he asks his question and he asks he tells you about uh, about yourself and I'm thinking well how do you know that you wasn't born he said Mr. Cannibal uh, Wikipedia I went Wicker who <laughs> I had to run home and ask my daughter, what's Wikipedia? Oh, daddy, come on. And she had to show me. It had all the information on me. I went, who told them that? <laughs> so that was so funny. I couldn't believe it. But that's how it started. Um, I was doing some talks, motivational, inspirational talks in, in primary schools. And these kids, year six, year seven, and yeah, year six. And they were listening. And I was I was enjoying because I know how it was for me when I was at school. You lose that concentration. You don't if a, you know, I mean you had a visit and he's talking about a topic, it was either oh, this is boring. It just went over your head. Attention but span just that was the one. Yeah. Just gone. Because you weren't interested. Yeah. But every kid I was talking to, every time I went to school, were listening. The teachers were listening. They were interested and they couldn't believe that their kids were listening. So, I was, you know, the topic weren't just about football, the topic was bullying, the topic was racism, the topic was education. I went through my story, how important it is. I didn't take it seriously. What happened to me? Don't let it happen to you. This, and they were listening. And so that's how it started. And from there, I left the foundation of FSC and I, went for a, a, a position and it was a teacher's assistant in the primary school, which was difficult. I was so nervous because I've never applied for a job. I've always played football. Sure. So now, football, you never need a CV. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. where did you play? Well, did you play? Uh, where did you play? Left wing? Uh, my left foot? Uh, never, eh, I score 50. No, the CV is like, yeah, what school do you went to? Oh, in the exam? No. Oh, the, this was tough. And I was nervous, but I went in and then I got called up at three and I went in and I had to be myself. I said it straight, how important education, I've got nine kids and what, 10, and how important it is for them now. I don't want them to fall into the same steps I took. Yep. And they listened to me, the deputy head and Ed. And um, it was amazing when they asked me, how soon can you start? And I said, I'll start right away. And that was it when you got the job. And I was like, oh my God. I've never been given a job like that. I've never oh, wow. been to an interview. So you can mean, I was so emotionally t- touched for that. I cried, I'd say, I phoned my mum to let her know I've got the job. She was proud and yeah, it was, it's a movement that, yeah, moved me for applying and getting a job. So, you know what I mean? From outside of football, yeah. And this time assisting and helping the kids. And I enjoyed because I love talking to the kids. I loved it. And, you know, from 2004, it was great, but obviously falling ill and 
had cancer and the worst thing when you have cancer and you're taking um oh god what's the word um no what's oh god chemotherapy cancer. chemotherapy sorry i didn't nearly forgot that no no taking chemotherapy and some of the worst things when because they tell you straight um be aware of catching colds worst people to have colds was the kids kids when you went in school oh they had cold man so i was knocked out nearly every two weeks so i had to eventually leave the position after 2010 and from there i made that decision to you know what i want my own foundation and it was a get you know i mean getting some people colleagues around me that knew the line where i was the full where i was going forward how i wanted it done how what i wanted to be doing and i had those colleagues and yeah we changed them over throughout the years that from 2015 to now, I've got some great colleagues behind me. Um, Jim of, of the you know, foundation, Raf. Shout out to Raf. Well, right. Monica, we've got Gary, uh, Jose, the Minosians are prominent. Um, Chelsea fan, my sister's involved. And we've been part of me. I've, I've been invited all over the place now, not just here in, in England, abroad. Um, it's where the foundation is taking us and where we are and me assisting with these kids because it's turned around now um what's been going on um with regard to the police with regard to the sus with regard to stopping with regard to knife crime yeah they need a direction and this is what's been going on i know because i never had a direction i had never had my father figure around and i understand what it was at the time and i tried done wrong yes Everybody said, but you've got 10 kids, Paul. Yes, there's 10 different women. But I made sure I was doing them kids. I made sure they knew their brothers and sisters. And this is where the authorities are right now. It's very difficult for these young kids to grow out of the poverty. There's poverty going out throughout the world. Yeah. But there's poverty and they need to understand the police, what is and how they can assist and help. This arm, um, I say hard arm. Um, what's the word I'm not trying to put to you? Um, arms business. This tolerance of coming at it so hard is not going to work with these kids. If you're patient and you talk to them, they will talk back to you. When you come with your arrogant self, because I've seen it so many times, even when I was growing up, when you get arrogance coming at you and they're in authority, yeah, white shirt, they're police, yeah. but they're disrespecting you just because who? Your colour of your skin. And I don't care, and I've said this. You're not going to get that respect. No. So this is the difficulty there as with these youngsters. Yes, we need to turn around. I'm not saying they're perfect, but they ain't perfect. But you've got to understand their background to some of them. And you ain't helping. So yeah, that's you know, some of the things I look forward to. You know, it's I mean? kind of it's kind of change. it's kind of basic psychology, which I'm very, very interested in. Um I mm. always have been, but I find the older I'm getting now that I'm I'm very interested in basic psychology. And it's it's kind of like it's, isn't it amazing yes. how when you find somebody that is in an authority position, whether it be yeah. your manager in your job, whether mm -hmm. it be, you know, someone in your family, when someone kind of puts an arm around the shoulder and kind of talks to you like you're just a normal human being, that's instantly it. there's a connection yeah. of respect, right? That's, that's the same thing, Ian. You will get that. Yeah. But you come off with that straight arm of the law, that. What do you want to expect? What were you going to expect from me? No, yeah. you've got me right lifted up here. Oh, you've yeah. gone from a five right. to a ten instantly. Trust me, yeah. that's it. So that response is not going to work. Yeah. You've got to change that. And I think they know that in authority, the police need to understand that. And admit, please, I'll get my own. If I can help, I want to help. If they want that help, I will help. Yeah. So um, there's so many things, don't get me wrong, and I'm so glad to be involved with um, and working with other associations is yeah it's been great that's what the foundation is about if they yeah. call me to assist i will assist we're talking right now even in football right now we can talk about the diversity and inclusions you know what i mean of black players that have gave a service to a club who's gone out and get their coaching coaching badges but can't even get a position at a club that is applied for why I'm saying straight why you know what I mean? It's a fair, it is it is a fair it's question. A chance. It is a fair I'm question. I'm telling you, this is what's been going on, and it's it's it hurt. It really hurts 
We've gone through all this. How many years I've taken that and you still, as a club, don't believe in a player or because of the colour of your skin. It's, that's not nice. And it's still going on. So when you say there was a situation, and I'm going because, you know what I mean, I'm, this is me, I, I say it as it is. Hey, a this, situation, is your, this is your platform, brother. You can when say you whatever hear you want. A manager, a manager was, was telling his players, you know what I mean, it's separate, don't congregate with the black players. A manager could tell his teammate, what, what, what is that all about? And obviously, you know, I mean, I ain't mentioned your name, but you got sacked. But that's to show you what behaviour is going on behind. People don't even know that. When you heard that, you're thinking, what? That was going on for how long? No. It's a difficult one. It's, a, it's so difficult to hear this. It hurts so bad. You know what I mean? And, and as much as we have organisation, we try to fight it, sometimes... It's so difficult, man. It's been given a chance. Just give the that's a chance, man. You know what I mean? It's not down our day, therefore, it's just give the whether you're black, Asian, or anything, give us a chance. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. That's what I could say on that. I don't think it's a bad message, to be honest with you. I mean, how how could it be a bad message? You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's it's it's, 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 quality. it's terrible. I ain't gonna lie to you. It, it does. I'm, I get upset. I get upset when I see Dude. a player who's got potential. They're all the experience. He's black. He never got it. And somebody who hasn't got that experience, he's been given the. You don't know how much that hurts. Yeah. That hurts. I I can't imagine. But, I can't yeah. imagine. I think I think we're in a place now, especially like in the main, like in the mainstream, you know, in the top echelons of, of football, um, we're starting to, you know, we're making some progress, obviously, compared to, you know, what, even 15, 20 years ago. Yep. Um, I, I still, agree. I Some still say do. we're not. Don't get me wrong. We're still there. But I think we're, trust me, yep. it was worse. We're oh, getting yeah. there. But I yep. think the authorities above need to do more. I'm not going to lie. They need 100%. to pull their fingers out. They need to do more and stamp it because these things are occurring too often and you're not doing nothing. You're not punishing anything. And that's what I say, I've got to be honest, FA and premiership. Yeah. These are the four. You've got to be taken in, in, in authority and say, look, this behaviour is not tolerated. We need to do something in authority to make them know we're not having it anymore. I don't care how many breaks of fine you give a person or even ban, then you do it. It warns everybody else, hey, what well, we can't do that. This is what's gonna happen. Because yeah, look, forget it's, the money it, factor, forget it, all that about it. Nah, forget that. Yeah. Let's do it for us and support. It's not just us, but you need to show that support. These young players are coming through and been getting all this corrupt behavior. And treated like, oh, no, they shouldn't be treated like that. No. They shouldn't be treated like that. They shouldn't be going through this at all. But anyway, I don't want to go too deep. Um, what the foundation is doing, don't get me wrong, we're on. I'm just looking, obviously, now to start the school, um, called kind of a road show. Um, and hopefully that will be in the connection with Chelsea. Obviously, I know we're going to come into it, but obviously with the new chairman, so I'm just going straight with it. Obviously, I, I was talking to all the, all the bidders and all the potential bidders, should I say. Um, they showed me huge respect and um, Sandy, very committed. Um, I'm doing plenty of, you know, I mean, plenty of work for the club. Um, but obviously, you know, what my situation was, was doing more of tackling anti-black racism while promoting diversity and inclusion. That's what I need to play out to them and understand what they how it meant for them and what um, a lot of what goal. a lot of tr twitter trolls i mean twitter isn't real life mm. i always try and tell my fans well i say my fans us chelsea fans mm. that watch this show i'm not that egotistical enough that i call them my fans yeah. i appreciate okay. anybody that clicks on the on the show um i think twitter has a twitter has a real kind of narcissistic nasty way of twisting words to make it out yep like you're just only for racism for the black people but that's not the case yeah. at all anybody that, that knows case. you 
you're talking about it and you've mentioned it literally previously racism on all forms whether it be Come on. someone against white someone against you know asian someone against I, indian it doesn't matter i don't play the race card exactly I don't care. exactly People coming to oh he's playing the race card sorry man if i wanted to play the race card where was you when you was giving me racism three years ago i didn't hear you saying oh my god Paul. oh he shouldn't be getting that i didn't hear you say that exactly so when i say and set up with it i'm stepping up with it i say what i mean exactly but don't get me wrong i'm supporting and i'm supporting for chelsea so when I say about, I talk about player, I'm not talking about disrespect. I just think that he could do more. But exactly. I'm saying what you really want to say. But I said it. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Oh, Paul, you're do- I can't take all that. If I was to take on every person, I'd probably have a mental breakdown here. <laughs> but I can't even bother with that. You know what I mean? I've got to say, yeah, all right, bang. You know what? He's out. You've he got jets. 10 kids, for yeah, God's sakes. What the fuck? Brother, I've gone through all that shit. <laughs> Inject. Inject that geezer. Get the He's not fuck out of here. Get the Your chest is support. You must know exactly what I'm saying. Right? I'm talking about players and now it's coming in. We know what we need at the club. I'll mention it. Who do you think? Da, 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 da. Do we need such and such? What position do we need covering? Da, da, da. I'll bring that up. You yeah. know what I mean? I'll talk about Chelsea, but don't disrespect me and tell me I don't think so. No, nah, you're not gonna hurt me, mate. I'm it's trust bullshit, me. man. I hit your band, book gone, simple as move on, and that's what it is. But as you said, that's what Twitter's all about. It's, you can't take this too too serious. No. It's a little banter. Yes, you hear a little news, you know what I mean? And you mentioned Pony, you know what I mean? You add a little piece of your version to it, yeah. you know what I mean? What you think, and if your opinion doesn't count, that's cool. But don't disrespect people. Everybody has a right for their opinion. No. So that's how I think Twitter is, and I don't take one. I say it as it is. I don't get me wrong. And people say, Paul, you have a position on the fact on the board. No, no, no. I like my say about regarding racism because that's what's happened to me. I know we need some more work done. You know what I mean? We've attacked Chelsea. And if I can help with that, therefore give me the chance. That's what that's what I'm about at this moment. 100 percent brother. I am. I suppose you, you did mention, we'll, we'll get into Chelsea now. Um, yeah. You did mention, um, now, I, like you, I didn't have now the, I wasn't privy to conversations, board conversations and stuff like that. But mm. um, Todd Bowley and his consortium yeah. stood out to me like a sore thumb as well. I don't know what it was. There was just Is something. It? There was just um, something. You know what? I mean, and I met all five. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all respectful. I heard what they had to say. And as I said, I put over what I, I thought that was needed. And I hopefully they could support that. Now, I had to give respect to Todd Bowley. Um, when I met him and, as you said, the team, him and Barbara. He looks like Kevin Costner, right? Vickerston. <laughs> I'm telling you, the guy was so laid back. I thought, what, this guy is the chief at <laughs> Was it Dodgers? I went to Dodgers. Yeah. I was like, and he insisted on waiting for me. He had a flight. This is what I'm trying to say to you. He had a flight and he had to hurry, but he waited on me because he wanted to meet me. Wow. I had to respect him for that. Wow. Now I sat down in the short time that I could. He gave me a story about ex players where they had an ex player from Dodgers and they, you know what I mean? I'll tell you straight. He was, don't, he was in the, the a player that he lost everything. He was homeless. He was living on the street. They found him. They've cleaned him up. He's now on the staff and he's now helping the young players. This wow. is what the respect he's showing. And that alone went, wow. Yeah. Because it ain't just about me. It's about, the, I work with players. Yes, yeah. I do do the hospitality on the max. I love that. I enjoy that. I enjoy meeting fans. So therefore, we still there. And I love the way he showed that factor, um, as well as what, you know, what we wanted to discuss. And at the time, he gave me that time, and then he went away. And then I met, and I talked with the rest of the you know, consortium team, as I said, in Barbara. And yeah, it was great. And that itself, I was saying, yeah, I love this, 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 um, this bit. I love to burn. And I thought, yeah, this is the one to take us forward. And so I'm kind of glad you know what I mean? The import, if I've given an import, I've had an import in that. For him to be, yeah, um, winning that bid, 
guy all the way in because it looks good. It looks good for the future. And, and that's what it's about. It was about not just myself. It's about the club. It's about the history of the club. It's about the fans as well. And this is what they need to learn. He's about that. He's about making our club big. And this is what he's done at the um, LA Dodgers or whatever. Yep. Um, he yep. wants to do the same here. And not just that, helping out and assisting him, investing more at the Coburn with the Coburn um, Academy. Oh, yeah. So um, I can only tell the fans, look out. You know what I mean? Really look out for this guy. Um, yeah. I like him. I like him. I so, think yeah, so. I think there's a lot upcoming. I mean, you, you already yeah. see the work in the background that they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marina, Seriously. Marina looks like she's going to be gone at the end of August as well. And they're already it's looking. Down, you know what? I love Maria because she did help the players, even Bruce. I got to give. You know what? Let's not take nothing away from Branovich. Oh, love the guy. Listen, I am, I am, I am team too. of Branovich. You know, they gave me the pool can of the suite. Yeah, they. He made that season, yeah, as well as Bruce Park. For me to have a suite, the biggest suite in the club, that's big enough. So these guys are still there. I mean, when I say still there, Bruce Park, Maria, they was helping players itself, and they do that to this day. And for what the benefits has done for the club, mate, it's hard to accept, but obviously what's going on, I don't go into that as politics. But what he did at that time when COVID was happening, this guy made access to our hotel, the two hotels for the doctors and nurses of Chelsea Westminster. Well, I will say one thing. Free. I will. Right. This is this is not Paul Canneville speaking. This is Ian Kelly speaking. And I will say mm. one thing. The fact that two days later, after the club was officially sold, he went mm. to the European government and said, I'm going to clear my name, motherfuckers. Well, yeah, well, and, you know what, big man, come on. Why would you take that? You can't accept that like that just easy. And no disrespect. You can't accept like, hold on, Abdu, because you think he's got connection with, and that's what you're going to do. Yeah. You made a sanction to, it weren't just him, it was the club. You could have made this club really gone down. And I, I, I yep. you know what I mean? I'm not a person in politics, but that's how you could have hurt. It was just about, the, the club it was the fans as well it was the work the workers who you know what I mean yeah. on a match day that work at the club nobody knew what was going on that was the difficulty the day the day that I met you and Chopper over mm. at the Brentford game that was my yeah. first that was my first game bringing my dad over to his first game right and they didn't and you get the, the at- full experience no See, the no exactly the atmosphere was totally different i was talking to the hotel the staff i was in the millennium yeah. i was in the i was in the millennium hotel so i was like literally now luckily i got the room that you could the only room that you can't see the bridge from so i had to hit the window <laughs> oh, like, no shit. but we were like oh man this is amazing you know but yeah. it was it was so funny because the, the 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 hotel staff i felt so sorry for it they were like we don't know yeah, what? when we're going to be they didn't know what's going on and shout yeah, out to Todd Bowley because apparently oh, he's backdated all of the wages to the time that everybody's lost their jobs. The mega store is open now. There you go. You see what this guy done? And that's what he's doing in his new role. Yeah. And Roman and don't get me wrong, pushed for him. Ro- exactly. Roman was doing all that when COVID was going. When look, when we weren't allowed at the club, when COVID was in, we couldn't come in there and work. Yeah. Yeah. He still paid. Yeah, well, he was still paying those staff members. What a man! Yeah, and that, a that's man. the man, and that's what I'm saying. People need to know. I hope people. I'm telling it as it is. People need to know what he was doing in the background. And you know what? Yeah. I'll say it as an Irish man. It started from mm. Theresa May and her constituency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah. you, Theresa May. Yeah. From me, uh, as an Irish man, I can say it. I'm not going to get banned. <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, my God. I mean, I love. Well, uh, I love, oh, I love, I, you know, I, I love the UK. I've got some great friends, including yourself. Um, but, but what 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 happened with Roman is wrong, and I hope I hope justice prevails at the end of it all. But that's not what we're here to talk politics. No, let's let's as we wind down now, Paul. Yeah, you're looking forward. We're not going to talk about transfer news and stuff like that. We, you know, no. we we will let it happen as as it happens. You um, know what? When that transfer opens, 
we would know because right now everybody's suggesting this person suggesting that person but you just don't know because that person might get an offer from a next club and next thing you think that we've had him go when by the season come thomas or tt as we call him will know exactly who he has i feel bold him will support him he knows exactly the players that we want at the club he knows the position that needs covering until then don't get me wrong. I put my two cents and said, you know what? Would we get so and so? Would we be interested in so and so? That's all I said. It's up to the manager. Don't get me wrong. Who he wants and who he buys, and we won't know that until the transfer window. So let's be, you know, optimal and see what goes on from there. You know what I mean? I really do, because right now we've had some really great players leave us. Right, I mean, it was it was uh, to me difficult to see. Rudy. Um, all because of the sanction, all because of that. Yeah. And that was really heartening that you couldn't organ- arrange the man's contract because of our sanction. I'll ask you one question. Go. Romelu Lukaku, it's coming out more and more that it seems he wants he wants out. Um, if we're- I'm, I'm going to be honest and say to you, Ian, don't wish to discuss it. Yeah, I don't think so. You know, don't wish to discuss it. Yeah. Yeah, don't believe everything you read, basically. Don't miss to discuss it. Simple as. Yeah. Simple as. Oh, you know what? I know your time, but I now need to need to have a snack. I've got a sore throat. I need a snack. But no, um, we are gonna I enjoyed up. talking with you, Ian, every time. Um, thank you for having me on. Um, and I hope your listeners enjoyed our, our, our chat. Um, uh, and it's about blues. Don't get me wrong. We aren't chatting about nothing. We can only chat about Chelsea. Well, you tell me, one thing, tell me one thing. Tell me one thing and one thing um, that everybody needs to know. Your new podcast. Oh, oh my God. Imagine not being Chelsea. And not just me discussing about Hashtag. Chelsea. Hashtag. Discussing about. <laughs> yes. That's what I said. Um, about what I'm doing, the foundation. And, you know, from 84, everything goes. It's a topic that I want everybody to be involved. So please sign up. Please subscribe. Please pass it on, um, Ian, and then two of you listeners. You know what I mean? Really want... This is myself, Gary Trosdell, Jammers. We've got topics. We're going to have some very, very interesting people, important people on there talking and sharing. So please, please subscribe. Get on there. Um, I'm, look, I'm excited about it. And... I'm not a presenter. Yes, like you said, I can talk, but I want to hear to the point. And I mean, I'm saying that as it is, and you're going to hear it live. So. Well, I want a guest yeah. spot on that show now. <laughs> I want a guest spot on that show. I'll it? talk to them with you. Know, I definitely or, I, or, I, or I at least want a hand-me-down. I want an exclusive interview with Todd Bowley. <laughs> We're loving that. We're loving that. Loving it. And, and, All right. and most importantly, where can people find the Paul Cannaville Foundation, which is Paul Cannaville? Uh, uh, it's Paul Cannaville at is it yahoo.co.uk. Uh, co.uk. I believe yeah. that. Yeah. Paul That's Cannaville right. Foundation yeah. at yahoo.co.uk. All Look links it, will be I mean? in the description in Everything. at the end of this I anyway. Mean, We've yeah. got T-shirts. We've got uh, sweatshirts. Show that T-shirt masks. you're wearing now. Yeah. Oh, you see, this is one a T-shirt that I love. That is love football, hate music. Somebody we work with, and I love this shirt when they had it, but I got the T-shirt where love Chelsea, hate racism. It's a classic it. shirt. And even the sweatshirt that says, imagine not being Chelsea. It's Every cute. time I wear that, geezer, I get pulled up. So... You know what I mean? It's for a worthy cause. Don't get me wrong. It helps me yeah. go out and do my work, school workshop. And that's what this is all about. So, um, yeah, thanks again, Ian, well, look, for having me on there. Paul, keep the liquidator as our anthem. Keep Chelsea. Chelsea. And uh, I love you, brother. And I can't yeah, wait. Yeah, man. Can't hey, wait to tell see dad, you. Tell dad hello for me and I'll wait for you when he returns back then at the bridge. Yes, 100%. my man. 100%. We, we, we we'll, have a, we'll have a beer in the suite, my brother. <laughs> have a good evening have a good, good weekend as well thanks take a lot, care man. my friend Catch thank you, you everybody bye-bye. thanks for listening All everyone right. bye-bye bye-bye